as well. Okay, sweet. So now that we have our paper toned, we can kind of start sketching in. Um, the nice part about the orange is we have like a pretty simple circular shape, um, but we do want to find out if it's exactly circular or if it's an oval. It's kind of hard to see on my printed out handout, but the edge of my orange goes to about here. And I want to recreate this circle shape on my canvas, but I want to make sure um, that this width matches with this width. So I'm just taking my pencil and I'm putting it down like this, and I'm marking the edge with my hand so I know that it's this long. And I'm going to rotate it, and I can see that it matches. So this is actually like pretty close to a perfectly circular shape, which makes our lives way easier. So what I'll do is I'm just going to sketch a circle on here. Should we do likewise? Yep. We kind of want it on the lower part of the paper. And I kind of mix, messed up. You can see I redrew it. But the nice part, if you have charcoal, is you can like rub that away. So did you do that with an eraser, the white line? Yes, sorry, I forgot okay. to mention that. Yes, this is an eraser. It doesn't look like it, it's just so dirty. <laughs> okay. And and the, the thing you did at the beginning, you just rubbed the charcoal over the paper. Yeah, I like to lay it on its side and then just kind of scrape it across well, it's flat, and then I just kind of rub it in with my hands. You can use like a tissue if you don't want your hands to be super dirty. So I have this really thin stick. Will it work with that? Uh, mm, is that the only charcoal you have? Yeah. Okay. It's these like little, um, it's like, a, yeah, I don't know. They're yeah, like, that might be, that might be a little tricky. Um, would you guys just want to do a pencil and I can switch to pencil? Um, I mean, I don't know. I've never used charcoal in my life, so I don't really know what I'm doing. So I will take your advice. Okay. That's Let's what, to, that's oh. all we have. It's like a really thin. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's switch to a pencil. Cause I think that you might have some troubles there and it might kind of want to break off and things like that. Okay. I think pencil might be easier today. Okay. Yeah, I don't usually work with charcoal like that very often. Usually I kind of do it for like small detail -y things, but it's kind of uh, tricky to like okay. um, large area stuff. Yeah, it says willow charcoal, whatever that is. Yeah. I'm not an expert. I, mean, okay. I think maybe that's like type of wood it comes from, I think. Ah, okay. But I'm not certain. I'm going to grab. Well, we have a lot of willows in China, so maybe that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, I also know they like, come in different, like, hardnesses and things like that, but mm. I can't remember what they're called when they have that. But yeah, so, um, yeah, so with the normal piece of paper, I'm going to sketch a circle. And I'm not worried right now if it's perfect. Um, I think it's better just to have something on the page that we can kind of like work with, um, if that makes sense. And so once I have the circle drawn, I know that the width and the height should be the same. So now I can double check. So I'll take the width that I drew and measure it to my height. And I can see mine's a little bit taller. I'll kind of zoom in a little bit so you can see. Um, but if I take this width right here to here, and then I switch it here, I can see that there's maybe like a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. Um, so it's a little bit taller than it is wide. So I just want to shorten my circle a little bit. 
that these two are equal. And then I can erase. Do you guys have a circle on the paper? Yep. Okay, perfect. So now we can start figuring out where we wanna put our leaves. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna find where this is on my drawing. So I'm, I'm gonna take this measurement. So I'm gonna measure from this edge to here. One, two, three, so. Like that. How did you do that? I'll tell you. It. So I just took this is my pencil right oh, here. Oh, okay. The edge of the pencil. Yep. Yep. One. One, two, three. And it almost lines up right at the edge of that orange. Can you see that okay? I just don't know how I do it. <laughs> oh, sure. So um, to do that on our drawing, we're just going to divide. Yeah, this I've done three parts. Oh, three parts, okay. And then straight up right here, you know, our stem's gonna land. Right? Thirds, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. So this should be divided a little into thirds. And I can kind of use the halfway mark. I feel like it's easier to see it here. And then kind of draw a line straight up. Two, three. And I always just kind of like guess what I think looks like a third, and then I'll adjust um, if it's too big or too small. Um, and you get better at guessing the more you do it. Do you guys find your third way mark? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So now we know where it's at on our y axis, oh no, our x axis, and now we wanna find it on our y axis if it's like a chart. So we wanna figure out where here we want the stem to start. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna measure from here to here, the edge of that orange down, and go one, two, and about three to the halfway mark. That kind of makes our lives a little bit easier. So we're gonna divide from here to the top into three, and there we find the location of where our stem's gonna start. Did you guys find it? Sweet, okay. I'm so, still working on my third okay. theory. <laughs> Sorry. Um, gone off. Have you no little helpers today, Dom? Um, no, they, I don't know, sort of lost interest. I don't know. It's fine. I get to draw more then. So. <laughs> Trying to eat my paintbrushes. My dog, he's quite a thief. He gets really good at it. He's super, super sneaky. He like there's that thing where he like slowly walks and he pulls it away really slowly. Like you won't notice. He likes your paintbrushes? He likes anything he can get his hands on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. He's looking for your attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's really good at stealing clothes too. So he'll like strew stuff all over the house. That's kind of funny, <laughs> like little nests. So, okay, so the, this, this line, is it 
divided in three to the top or sorry yeah. I, but... so from our halfway point yeah to the top there should be three sections okay that makes sense yeah perfect okay should we move on to the next part mm -hmm. sweet okay um so now let's draw or start sketching in kind of the rough angle of where we're going to put our stem um so, so i'm going to kind of simplify this it's a little bit of like an s curve shape kind of like that <coughs> but for now let's just simplify it into a single straight line we kind of want to get the big idea down first before we add like the fancy flourishes of adding that like S curve. Um, so what I like to do when I'm kind of trying to match angles is I can actually just place my pencil and then drag it over. Um, but do you guys have a printed image? Yeah. No, no. Sorry. Oh. Okay. So I I'll show you know. a different way. So this way I like to lay it down and see where it intersects. And I can mark right about there. So if this line were to continue, it would kind of hit right there on my line. So I can go back to my paper and I know it kind of starts here, passes through here. So it has about that angle. So it passes through the, the top third marker, but up. Oh, it should go a little bit above it. Sorry, yeah, because that's that third marker. It should go about right about here. And then about here, I'm kind of eyeballing it a little bit, but it's in that um, right. Why is it above and not through it? What should uh, I be okay. looking at? Our stem's kind of broken into two sections. Um, it kind of does like an up and then a side motion. Um, so it, this is our little oh, X okay. sign here, and then it kind of crosses through that way. Does that make sense? So that's the X, and then the angle starts just a little bit above it. I've kind of drawn all over this picture, so it's kind of getting messy now. Um, yeah. Do you guys want to hold those up and we can take a look and see how they're coming after you get that down? Yeah, that looks good. And I think you can extend oh, no. that line a little bit farther too, out past the orange. Mm -hmm. Yes, that looks good too. I would just extend those lines a little bit farther past the orange. Hmm. All right. Should we start adding this leaf? Perfect, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, we've been kind of using this area, so let's kind of continue this. So if I draw a straight line up and I mark that as the top of my leaf, we wanna find the distance right here. We kind of, we wanna know how far to, the top of our leaf stops at. So. How did you know what your leaf, like on a blank page, paper for us to measure how mm -hmm. far up to go? Oh, so I'll show you. So now that I have, I know I want to find this, I'll move this around to just see if I can find a nice measurement. Um, usually that's kind of how I, I work. I like to find like, I want to find this length. So then I'm going to compare it to the stuff we've already been working with, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm going to take this length and I'm going to move it down and it actually works really nicely. That was happy coincidence. So, so is it half? 
it's halfway yeah exactly and that just worked out nicely kind of thing um which I find like happens more than you'd think when you're drawing um I feel like that's kind of the real key is kind of finding those nice relationships um I always think there's more measuring and drawing than you would expect <laughs> mm. Did you guys get that? Yeah. Perfect. Let's see where our leaf ends. Um, I like to just kind of like to know where things end. I'll just kind of see where they land at. So I just drew this little dotted line down and I can see it ends about halfway in that little section there. And I can just bring that line up. And I know that the leaf is gonna end somewhere up here. So I have, I'm like defining the borders, if that makes sense. Sorry, my, my sound just cut out. So is the leaf um, about the same distance as the top half of the orange? Yes, they, they're about the same. So I just took that okay. measurement and I brought it up. Okay. Okay. And then I also just kind of drew a line down here to see how far the leaf would go over. And I found it to be about halfway through this little third section, kind of at the end here. I just brought up a line so I know it's going to end right there. Let's find out how long our stem needs to be. Let's find, I'm gonna grab a different color. Let's find this length right here. So I'm just gonna, I know I wanna find this length, so I'm gonna take that length and I'm gonna start comparing it, measuring around. And it works out pretty nicely that it's about this length here. So let's take half the orange and then we can place it here. And I know that's about half the orange from there to there. I'm confused. Can you just okay. go back and do that last part again, please? Explain. Yeah. So I just want to find, um, if this is our stem where it kind of goes up like this, I want to find this length right here. So this is the length I want to find. And I'm just going to kind of take my pencil. And I'm going to see if I can find somewhere on the orange that has that length. And it kind of works out nicely that the halfway point of our orange is that length. So on mm -hmm. my drawing, I can measure half my orange can tilt it and I can place that length right there. And I know right at the top of my pencil right here. Yeah. That's the length of my stem. Okay. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, can I just show you what I have so far? Cause you might be able to spot where I'm going. Um, so if I go to this thing, I'm not sure, do I need to go further or? Yeah, so do you wanna take your pencil and measure half of your orange? Um, yeah. Yeah. So and then do you actually have, have measurement marked yeah. on your pencil? Yeah. You can just take your pencil and place it on top of that line. And then where your pencil ends, it should tell you the length that it needs to be. Yeah, see. So it, it might go past that line a little bit. Mine is right on it. Like oh, three, so you... it's three centimeters. Mm -hmm. So then you just kind of guessed right the first time, just kind of fun. <laughs> That's so if I it just lines up, yeah, yeah. So you're, you should be good then. Okay. Right? Yeah. Sweet. Are you guys ready for 
the next part. Cool. Okay. Yep. So at this point, I'm going to start sketching in just a basic idea of the leaf. I know it has to hit here. I know it connects onto my stem. And I know it ends up here. So with those three points of information, I can kind of start looking at my sketch and I can see that it goes up to meet that line there. And then I can bring it across to meet this point up here. And then I'll bring it down. And then it angles down once again. And then I'll bring it back up to here. So I don't know if you guys notice, um, but there's a lot of like kind of complicated curves and things like that going on in this leaf. If I were to kind of trace the edge exactly. And so I find it super helpful to break it up into little segments of straight lines, almost like if you were to wrap it around. Um, so it's something more like this, right? Just simplifying all those curves. We are almost like finding a placeholder and we wanna place down all of our stuff and see if they all work together before we spend that time like really detailing it out and making it look nice and polished. We're kind of making our map. When you guys are done with that leaf, I can take a look too. So I think I did my leaf is like picking up too high. At the, can you see that? Oh, yes, I see. I think just slightly. Yeah, I think that top corner, um, I would just bring down a tiny bit. It's nice that you notice like the subtlety of it coming up. I would just kind of shave off that top a little bit. Yeah, that looks really nice. Perfect. All right. Are you guys ready for our second leaf? Yep. Cool. Um, so when we're drawing this, I want to pay attention. We're gonna outline it again, kind of like we did the first one. Um, but I wanna pay attention too to the negative space in between our leaves. So not only am I trying to recreate this shape, but I also wanna create this shape as well at the same time. So I'm gonna start right about here on our line. I'm gonna start with an angle down. Yeah. Come up and angles up a little bit more. Oops. And then I'll just bring that right back down to the leaf. Or the body. How did that turn out? Yes, that looks good. And I just noticed one thing um, with your first leaf. Can I say that one more time? Pauline, I think your leaf, the first one, mm. is attaching to the stem right here. Yep. I would just angle it down so it starts um, a little bit below there. Okay, so. Yeah, I can kind of sketch that so you can see. Oh. 
Yep. Thanks. Yeah. This is the point of the drawing where I feel like it starts to become more fun. Um, Cause I feel like at this point we have our map drawn. Um, so oftentimes what I'll like to do is I'll take like an eraser, like I'm a bigger eraser and I'll just kind of like lightly erase over the whole thing. Um, I can't find my eraser anywhere. But if you have one, I would recommend, oh, here we go, doing something like that. I kind of like to do it because Sometimes things can get like really confused with all these measuring lines. So it kind of pushes everything back a little bit. And then we can go back over top um, and add the lines that we kind of want to keep there permanently. We still want to be able to see the sketch. Um, it's just enough to like kind of push it into the background, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I don't mind seeing like the sketch lines in a drawing. I think they're kind of fun to see like the construction. Um, so I'm not overly like, I don't try too hard to erase them all, but I do like to make them a little bit less noticeable. And you guys are ready. Do you wanna let me know and we can do the next part? Ready? Cool. Okay. I'm just doing my leaf again because it's not, it's too high, I think. What is too high? The leaf? The leaf. Oh, this, okay. The, the, the top leaf is sticking up. It's like not right. <laughs> if you want, I can take a look and do like a little bit of measuring and see. Um, um, I just rubbed it all out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hang on a oh, I lost you. What was that? Oh, I thought I'd lost you. Oh, no. Okay. Silence. Still here. <laughs> yeah. I just get some water for it. Good. How's the um, Could you move the? Oh. Could you move the the paper? Yeah, there. It's a little see? messy now. <laughs> it's just really small on my computer. I'm trying to work out and make it bigger. Oh, is it not spotlighted for you? Um, um, if you clicked on the small one, would that then make it the dominant one? It is the dominant one. It's just very small. Oh, just I can't, I can't really see now anything of the little leaf. <laughs> um, if you want, I'll just try and do it from the picture myself. Okay, I can also send a picture of this through the chat. Um, yeah, my chat is not working. That's the problem. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I can't get the VPN to turn on. Got you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, is it the measurement of kind of, oh, I got paint on me. Um, the measurement from this kind of midpoint of the leaf is about halfway. Oh, can you here. see? I can't see. It's very bright here. Yeah, do you want to hold it up and then I can measure here on my screen. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. There's the curtain, sorry. They closed. Right there, okay. Yeah. Did you open them? Could you pull it back from the camera a little bit? 
right a little bit more right there okay let me measure real quick I think it's okay I think it's the right height I am noticing I think your bottom um I think it's slightly too high up actually look at the space that's the bottom created. one yeah look at the space that's okay created in between the two leaves um do you see how that's different from this one right here this shape sometimes mm. i can help I think the way I'm seeing it right now is um put this over. I'm seeing something like would you mind holding that up one more time? Yeah, maybe the top leaf is the stem of the top leaf that comes out of the main stem needs to be a bit more per perpendicular, I think. Oh. <laughs> um, and then I think the, yeah, the smaller leaf needs to be closer to the orange, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna try to sketch out what I'm seeing on your paper so I can like show it on mine. Okay, sweet. So I think the angle here is looking pretty good to me, actually. This angle, I think, looks OK. Um, but I, I'm noticing that this shape being created looks something like this. And the shape we're trying to create is this kind of like, it looks like a vase almost kind of shape in between our leaves. So I would um, bring this down. I'll do it in a pink part so you can see. Um, I'd bring this down more like this. Um, something like that. So that leaf has to be lowered a little bit. Mm. And I think the shape. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? How does that, that help a little bit? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I can take a look too if you need. Pretty simple now. Does that look better? Yes, Is that does look better. Mm. Okay. It looks a little small. Let me double check. Our leaf should end if I draw a straight line down from the edge of that leaf. It ends about here in the our middle section. It's about a third of the way over from here. Um, can you see that? 
in this middle section, it lands about maybe a third of the way. And if I just draw a straight line up, that's where that leaf ends. Right. Does it end in the right? The place? middle of that third, right? Um, about is more about oh, the third of the week. Two thirds. Yeah, if I kind of it. <laughs> yeah, two. If I isolate it, it might be okay. easier to see. Okay, I think yeah, I need that can go over a bit then. I'm kind of looking at the photo and looking, and yeah, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to like isolate it a little bit. Can you see that? This is our center third. I bring it in like a third from the left or the right and straight up there. That's where it starts or ends. Okay. My brain is playing tricks, but that's, does that look about right? Yes, that does. Yeah, I think you're good. <laughs> it's kind of tricky. It's hard too when they've been broken down so much. Um, they like into such weird shapes. But yeah, I think you're good. Are you guys ready to do the next part here? What's this? What's this? What's this? This. So we can start adding. Um, I like to do uh, like what's the word? Kind of form lines or lines that's gonna help us understand the shapes of the things we're actually drawing. Um, and you can see them on our orange in the picture. Um, it might be easier. It's hard to see on this now, um, but they're these. Uh, what's the word like? We have them on the globe, um, latitude and longitude almost lines that are wrapping around our orange. And if you look at the stem, you can see the little intersection of those areas are indented, kind of like this. Oh yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah. I like to draw these latitude longitude lines and you can use those intersections to create these little, I don't know what you'd call them, but where they meet. Mm. So that's, oh yeah, okay. I answered my own question. I like to think of like, Drawing, um, like, have people ever talked about like drawing being a language? That might just be a thing that they talk about in my like drawing and painting classes of it being like a language and like how it's supposed to be communicating an idea. And I had to think of it as like me showing what I understand about the object, if that makes sense, and how I can do that like the most effectively. Um, so like if I want to spell out to the viewer that this is like a round object, um, I want to, I like to draw in those horizontal lines, even if they don't stay there at the end. Um, I feel like you can feel that they wrap around the orange after you're done, if that makes sense. It's like you're spelling out to the viewer that it's this round object. Um, and that these kind of lines are really important because those are kind of what tells the viewer that that's the shape if that makes sense. Do you guys get those? Yeah, perfect. Sweet. I like to 
break up my stem, we can break it into like a cylinder like shape. So I'm going to construct it out of two cylinders. So I'm looking at that first piece here at the bottom. And then this piece at the side. And remember how we're talking about how it kind of creates an S shape? This is the point of the drawing now where we can kind of start adding those nuances because we have our roadmap. So we can start adding those um, smaller curves that we're seeing because we know we're like putting the work in. Oh no, I think we lost, lost Dominique there. We know we're putting like that work in and that it's in the right place. I hope she can get back on. Oh. We lost you. Can you hear, hear me okay? Sorry, I'm just having really bad problems today, so I couldn't only hear bits of what you're saying for the whole class so <laughs> I'm just struggling um and I just got kicked off zoom anyway um, no worries we're only hearing a third of it it's looking good it's always a struggle yeah so basically, I, these are kind of constructed from two cylinders. And now we can move up to the leaf of our stem and same thing. So now that we have our roadmap and we know where it's at and everything like that, we can kind of start taking the time to add a little bit more nuance and detail to it. So I'm noticing in the picture that this little stem kind of like wraps around the edge. Let's zoom in a little bit. It wraps around the edge of um, this stem here. So I want to make sure that I include that. And then up here, this isn't really a corner. Like I have it drawn, it's more curved. So I can draw that curve. The leaf is folded over slightly. So this is that edge that's closest to the viewer. So it's twisting, kind of like, um, think of it as like if I were drawing like a carpet or something. Sometimes it's easier to think of in, sometimes it helps me to visualize it in like a different form. If this were like a carpet bending this edge here is kind of what we're looking at, that leaf bending. I've had, um, Drawing teachers in the past talk about when doing this kind of stuff, um, focusing on like the edges and then just trying not to break that line. So if I start focusing on the edge here, I'm just following it with my eyes. I'm trying not to break that line. Um, and sometimes that can help getting those like more complex lines. But I have something like this. So it kind of folds over itself twice. It has that front fold. And then right here. And then it folds up again in here. How are those turning out? How do you know how far to go down on the leaf? Down oh, down here? here? Or yes, yeah. Honestly, I eyeballed it, but we can always measure 
picture. Um, so we can take it from our drawing or our picture here. I can measure and then see if I can find somewhere where it fits. Um, yeah, here. So this length from here to here is the same as a third of our orange. So I can take a third of the orange, move it up. And yeah, mine actually is a little too short, so I can bring mine down. I totally eyeballed it. <laughs> So a third, okay, so I need from a third from where up top? Um, from that top measurement that we did earlier. Okay. Yeah. That looks better. Mine was too skinny. That's the nice part is like, I don't know, you can always double check stuff and remeasure and measure again. And when you skip measuring like me, you can go back. For the second leaf, once again, I'm going to try to focus equally as much on this inside shape as the one I'm actually drawing in here. Um, so I'm going to start down. It's kind of tricky because that back leaf kind of gets faded away. Um, so we don't really have lots of like hard edges to work from or like yeah, they're just soft, they're fuzzy. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of sketch in where I think they're supposed to end. Get something more like this. Throw my pencil. Have you guys ever done um, blind contour drawings before? What's it called? A blind contour drawing. No. They're kind of fun. They're a little humbling. Um, the idea is that you um, don't look at your paper at all and you're not allowed to pick up your pen and you just have to stare and like not look down and outline uh -huh. whatever you're drawing. And you have to move your pen super, super, super slowly. And they make your brain hurt. And then when you're done, they look kind of crazy because you didn't look at all. <laughs> nice for like this kind of drawing. I feel like practicing, like matching that hand eye coordination. Something's wrong with my second leaf. Probably both of them, but in particular, the second one. Okay. The second one looks a little small to me. I just want to measure. Let's see. From here, oh, let me move this over. Looking at this from here to here on our leaf, I can take that measurement there and it looks like it's about that third again. Is that how wide yours is if you take this? No. Oh no, no, that's what's, so a third from, so a third from about there to there, um, oh, from yeah. the stem to the leaf. Not too far, yeah. Okay, so then go to there and...
Is that feeling better? No, actually, it's worse. I've just realized the height <laughs> difference between the curve of the apple, or orange, and the um, highest part of the second leaf. First leaf is too low for me. Oh, interesting. So this measurement. So, so go over to the right. No, and come keep going over. Yeah. So to the edge of that leaf. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. me, keep going right again. Right, right, right. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So that's why I'm wrong. That's too, I have that much lower. So um, probably a third in between. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, and it does angle up slightly. Is it angled up differently on yours? Like getting a lot more. I'll tight. show you that. Ah. I think that's my issue. Um, that I don't have a big enough gap. I've just forced oh. it in there. Yeah, so that upper leaf needs to yeah. be angled up a little bit more slightly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mine is something wrong with mine as well. <laughs> I can take a leaf. Okay, it looks to me like the upper part of the orange, um, like this section right here. Yeah, it looks a little wide to me. Um, let me measure. So the upper part of the orange. Are you talking about Pauline's? Or on your drawing, actually. Um, this area okay. right here. From yeah. there, that feels too, too big to me. Um, okay. Let's measure around here. Yeah, so the height from this part of the orange the to stem the is too low down on the orange i the think the start so. of the stem yeah i think it is it should be just slightly more okay. than half of that yeah so i would move it up a little bit mm -hmm. yeah Mm. Is that feeling a little bit better if it's raised? How are they feeling now? My negative space is wrong in this. That's the difference between yours and mine. If I look at the negative, my negative space. Oh, they're just touching. Yeah. So let's see. Um, do you want to either hold it up or if you send it through the thread, I can take a look. I can take a photo and send it if you want. Yeah, do you want to do that? And then I can yeah. take a better look at those measurements. A little bit more accurate. Oh, cool. 
I see it. Okay. Let's take a look. Yeah, so something I would do. So if I measure from here, I'll move this over from here to here on my drawing, I can see it's about two thirds of the width of my orange. And if I measure that distance on your drawing, it measures about half the orange. So if you measure from, if you find those two thirds mark on your drawing, and then you can rotate it up like this, you'll be able to find the top of your leaf up here. Yeah. I think you'll find that yours is lower than that. So you can tilt your whole leaf up and that should give you more room in that negative space. So are you saying move the, the top? Leaf up. Yeah, so I would move the top like that tip isn't um, as tall as I think it should be. So I think I would just rotate that leaf upwards. Okay. Um, if you want to know how much you can measure, it should be about two thirds of the width of your orange. So right here, here, here. Go. And I think that will give you that space you're looking for. It's going to lead to. Okay. And at the risk, I don't want to dominate this. Um, I'm happy to work on this on my own and keep going. That helps. Honestly, at this point, I think we're ready to kind of move into shading. Ah, okay. So yeah, you can take time. I'll kind of go over. Um, have you, I'm sure you guys have like shaded spheres before, things like that. Um, has Lee talked to you kind of about like, I, don't, I think of it as like the magic edge on the sphere. Have you guys talked about that at all? You can it. So I don't know if it was actually called like a magic edge, um, but it's actually one of, I think like the most interesting things you'll find. Um, you'll see it like in things other than spheres. Um, but if I have a sphere with light hitting it, I know this area here is probably where it's gonna be the lightest. Oh yeah, I have this little yeah. shade. And then this one here. But what's really interesting is that light's passing, you know, behind and in front of, and it's hitting the surface that our ball is on, right? And that light bounces off the surface and back up onto our sphere on the bottom here. So what you get is this little sliver of light right at the edge, right by our darkest part of the sphere. I'm kind mm. of exaggerating. It's usually what? a smaller sphere than that. And that gives the illusion that light's kind of like wrapping around our object. It's really small, it's really slight, but it makes this really big difference. And if you ever get into painting, it's one of the funnest things to paint too, because what you can do is whatever color your the surface is, it's gonna bounce back and it's gonna make that that color because the light's bouncing off the surface. Super fun, I love that kind of stuff. But when we shade our orange, we wanna, it's kind of hard to see in my printed photo, but you can see it in um, the photo on the screen, on my screen at least, um, this little edge down here, this section is lighter than this darker section right in here. 
and it's that light being bounced off. So this section here, it's gonna be kind of our darkest area, say maybe right there. And then we have a little bit lighter. Has Lee talked to you guys at all about like some of the cross hatching techniques for shading? Not that I remember. Okay, okay yeah. I am a big cross hatcher in all of my drawings. Um, and I'll kind of show you. So I'm I feel like you've probably seen other drawings like this. Um, but basically it's where you use overlapping lines to create shadow. Um, so the more that the lines overlap, the darker it's going to appear. So just by creating these hatch lines, I have this area of the lightest, this medium, and this dark. And then the how much I space out my lines is going to give me control over how dark it's going to look. Um, but where cross hatching can be kind of fun on a shape like this is we can use our lines to suggest the curve of our object. So I can come in here on my orange and I can kind of start shading and I can change my lines to suggest this curve. And what I like to do with cross hatching, I'll kind of do a pass over almost everything I want to put into shadow. And then I'll do a second pass over the areas that I feel are slightly darker. And you kind of just continue in this way. I like to lay down that foundation in my shaded areas, and then I'll slowly build up my darker areas. And I can use now the direction of my lines to kind of suggest that it's on top of a sphere, kind of drawing those longitude and latitude lines. Like it kind of follows that lead of like drawing being a communication tool and we're trying to explain to our viewer exactly what this object is, what it feels like in person, what it looks like, and like adding that extra layer of like our shading kind of representing its curve kind of adds an extra layer of that. Because obviously, you know, shading doesn't actually look like that in the photo, but as a drawing. So we have liberties. So I know this kind of section over at the edge is my darkest. So I'm spending more time over here building it up. And I kind of make a radiant moving over. There's a bunch of different ways to shade. I think my preference is cross hatching. Um, but have you guys seen like people do stippling where they do like just a bunch of tiny little dots? I always think that looks cool, but I do not have the patience for it. It's also just scribbling and blending with your finger and things like that. You kind of play around and see which ways you like to do it the most. I think I like this way because I feel like it tells the most information about the object. There's also quite a bit of darkness up in this corner here. So I wanna make sure that I get that.
that shading kind of makes sense to you guys? Yep. Cool. Noticing that area on the bottom of the stem is pretty dark. And then it has like uh, the highlighted side is here to the upper right. You can put this left side in shadow. I think that's gonna do a lot to add dimension. Also um, right here, you can see the shadow of this stem that's over crossing, that its shadow is right here on this stem. That's kind of nice. You can see those two objects are like affecting each other in the same space. Like that's important to put down. It's very small, but it's there. And this leaf is curving in on itself, so it has that really dark center. I'm kind of adding my shading lines in that curve. So it feels like it's curving in on itself a little bit. Sometimes I find it useful to outline my shadows a little bit before I fill them in. Sometimes I feel like um, when we're drawing, it's really easy to think about like um, the lines and like finding the perfect right answer outlines of our object, if that makes sense. Um, but I tend to like think of it more as like finding the shapes um and like the forms that construct the objects because I feel like it's less about lines and more about shapes um so I don't know outlining shadows I feel like helps me think about it in forms of like shapes you can kind of like get some cool interesting ones sometimes in my like more abstract paintings I'll leave the outlines of the shadows really visible with like a bright color which I think kind of has a cool effect because they can, can really create like pretty patterns and like interesting things, so.
How are they coming? The works of art. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> I can but live in hope. <laughs> I'm kind of going over with my eraser to bring back some of those areas I feel like got too dark. Okay, I'm going to reveal mine. Perfect, I'm excited. I'm just happy that the leaves, that, that I was able to improve the leaves. Yeah, it, it's funny how like something slight, like a slightly different angle can kind of lead to that chain reaction effect of the second leaf being the wrong side and things like that. Oh yeah, that is really nice. Well, there's a lot of room for improvements, but... It's yeah, it's better than I was struggling in the early part of it. I think you can still celebrate it. <laughs> I think it looks really nice. Thank it definitely it's, it feels like it has form and that it's round, which I feel like is really tricky to get. It, the foot, uh, photo image is beautiful. It's a stunning color, the orange. Right. I think it would make a really pretty painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's I've been vibrant um, really enjoying, right and like having that dark background behind it mm. Mm -hmm. yeah it reminds me of like some of those fruit basket kind of renaissance or baroque paintings you'd see yes yeah mm -hmm. you can see like um like water drops or something of perspiration on on it if you look closely on the leaf the top yeah. leaf and uh, on the bottom of the left side of the orange and a few sp sprinkles of water there it's beautiful yeah I totally can I also love you can see like the texture of the skin of the yes. orange mm -hmm. yeah it would be a very fun painting project and who's your favorite like artist <laughs> I have such a hard time with that um I'm really into like baroque art right now so I yeah. really like Caravaggio yeah um, but for like modernist painters I really like George O'Keefe but oh, okay. yeah <laughs> do you have a favorite artist I quite like the Irish artist Frank Kelby um Kelly Kelby K E. K-E-A-L-V-Y, I think it is. Um, oh, look, I love Van Gogh. When I was at primary school, the teacher introduced us to the Dutch masters. And I've just loved them ever since. But, uh, so, yeah, his Van work Gogh is so particular. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I don't particularly like uh, Picasso. I know he's not, for, uh, he's not uh, <laughs> the Dutch master, but the, the golden era. Mm -hmm. um, Dutch artist, I think is probably my favorite, but uh, there's lots of, I rarely dislike a painting. Yeah, I think that's fair. I feel like I don't know too many Dutch artists. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of like those like really hyper-realistic paintings with like all of the tiny little details. Is that Dutch? Well, I'm thinking more like the, the more commonly known ones like Starry Nights and the chair and the, the room, um, the Vincent. Yeah. The painting of when he's struggling. Um, or just a, some of the along the canals, those type of things. The winter mm -hmm. scenes in um, in Brussels. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I feel like I can see it. Yeah. Yes, I really I'm sure if you Google them, you'd see. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, and they, they feel like they um, like embrace like the actual paintbrush and paint stroke, which I think is really pretty. Yeah. How what is um? Doing? 
Hmm? I was going to ask Dominique what's her favorite um, artist. I don't know. I don't think I have one, but my my mother is a painter, so I I I would have to say her. <laughs> yeah. Um, my mother is a painter, and my grandmother was also a painter, but they have very different styles. Um, I, so, yeah. but they both used a lot of color. Like, um, can I show you one? Can I my share? My grandmother was more like, like very, very abstract stuff, and my mom does more figures. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this one, Dominique. That's the boathouse in Castle Leslie on the lake. Oh, wow. That's my dad's. <laughs> Can you put it down a bit? Um, put, oh. oh, wow. It's your dad's? That's and good. so are these. These You won't know these scenes. These are from like County Dublin on the bay. Do not, I'll try and hold them up. These are the latest ones I brought back. Um, oh, my gosh. Wow. They're very definitely. He only took up oil painting when he retired. That's Dublin Bay in the county wow. Dublin. But that's a more familiar one. I love that. That's my favorite one. He'd weep if he right? saw my efforts. <laughs> <laughs> you have both artists in your family. That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Whole generations. Yeah. How did your orange turn out, Aunt Dominique? Um, like this. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Really nice. I love I how, know. like, the you can see the different personalities with how, like, you guys hold your pencils and the line work and the shading. It's crazy. It's like the same object, but, like, you can totally see the personalities in it. Totally different. Yeah. I had to totally redo my leaves, so yeah, I'm a bit behind the shading. Yeah, leaves are kind of tricky. I think that's everything for tonight, or I guess for today for you guys, it's night for me. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for being here. Bye. I had a good time. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yes. <laughs> I'm away next week, but I'll be back to Leah's class the weekend after. Oh, perfect. Sounds good. Bye. Okay, See you, folks. Bye. Bye. Bye.